Did you use Flutter Web for your website? What are your opinions on Flutter Web? Should I use Flutter Web for my next project? How is the performance on Flutter Web? These are just some questions that I received. Now for those of you who are new, Flutter supports the web platform, meaning that if you have a late version of Flutter, you can probably enable Flutter Web. And depending if your dependencies allows it, it will enable you to have a full version of your application running in the browser. Now this is amazing, but I want to cover some different topics that has led me to, in the majority of times, to not pick Flutter, but maybe something like Next. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to like and subscribe, and you will find a full write-up over at robertgrunoga.com. Also, of course, make sure to smash that like button, and let's get into it. So I have pretty much brought this down to six simple questions that has made it possible for me to easier choose what framework and what to use and what to not use. And of course, I want to make this clear. This is the requirements that I pick for myself to come to a conclusion easier to pick a framework for what suits my needs. So here are the topics that I go through when I want to pick what I want to use. And we'll go through each topic one by one, starting with the first one, which is performance. So now looking at my current website, which is robertbrunager.com, which is built with Next.js. And these are the analytics or statistics coming from Lighthouse. And just to make that clear, I haven't tried to optimize any of these sites. These are just the basic sites after they have been built. To the left side, you can see the performance coming from the Next.js site, which is the personal site. And to the right, you can see a Flutter web app. Now I want to make this clear. This site is actually built 10 months ago, so it doesn't have the latest Flutter version. But even if it did, it wouldn't have the same performance as the Next.js site. Now the performance part is, in my opinion, one of the most important points. As the Flutter website could sometimes take up to even 11 seconds, depending on the device and network speed. And comparing that to my personal website, which was 1.4 seconds, which arguably have more content to actually load, such as images. So the first point here will go to Next.js for me. Now to the next one, which is SEO, which stands for Search Engine Optimization. And to put this simply, it's just a matter of how many people will actually be able to find your website on the search engine. So depending on how you optimize this, it could lead to more visitors over on your website. Now, Next.js is already known for its good search engine optimization. And probably as many of you know, SEO hasn't been the full focus of Flutter Web just yet. Here is an example of an open issue over at the GitHub repository. And even still, I think Flutter will have a hard time competing in this area. Now I don't think we need to cover anything more here, so the point will go to Next.js. Now the next topic is a bit interesting, and it's what I refer to the feel. In this case, it means if I like the feel of the website when I go over to it, it can be either from a mobile browser or a desktop browser or a iPad or a tablet browser. Now most of you would probably instantly say that the feel will most likely give a point to Next.js, as it will already have those native feeling elements, such as a real scroll bar and other elements as well. But now the important thing here is depending on what platform you're on, it can be trivial or not trivial. So what I mean with this, let's say you go into my website with your mobile phone, you go into the browser and you start scrolling. It will be a few scenarios or no scenarios where you even use things like the scroll bar because you are using the native scrolling on your phone. And people are already used to having native apps, which has great feel when you use them. So transferring that feel to a website for mobile users is not such a bad thing. But as I brought up before, if you would use, for example, a desktop, it could feel very awkwardly to be on a Flutter website. You may look for a scroll bar, and in the end you only find the integrated Flutter version of the scroll bar. Or when you try to highlight text, you can't really highlight it the same way. And maybe if you try to highlight something, the site will start scrolling because it takes the mouse as a scrolling behavior. Now I'm sure all of these things could be improved on, but for now I will give both Flutter and Next.js one point. Now this next part is when I will go into requirements. So what do I mean with requirements? Well, I will give you a real example for the website I'm using right now, robertbrunager.com. If you go to that website and go to videos, you will be able to find all of my latest blog posts covering my latest videos. But you may actually wonder where are those blog posts hosted? 
So if you go into GitHub, you can see that all of my blog posts are actually inside the project. Now I won't go deep into what server-side rendering is. Instead, I will recommend you this video from Fireship, which will teach you all of the fundamentals that you need to know to get an understanding of that. But in this case, for this website, one of the requirements was that I wanted to be able to write blog posts and then have those blog posts on my website, which meant that this specific requirement required me to use Next.js for my personal website. So in this case, the point went to Next.js. Now this next topic, which is time, is actually quite interesting. So let's say you have a working Flutter application and now you want your app to also have a accompanied web version as well. And in this specific scenario, let's say that your Flutter application don't need many changes to be able to run on web. Now, all of your users have started requesting a web version. So if they don't have their phone on them, they can actually go into the website and do the changes or whatever they do on that application. So in this case, you have a lot of users already wanting a website and you feel that the web version of what you would provide would fill those other topics that we discussed. And then to me, that is pretty obvious or a sign that you can go with a Flutter version of the web app as you may not have time for spending weeks or even months creating a new website in another framework like Next, React or Angular. So in this case, I will actually give the point to Flutter as time is a huge factor in this one. Now, the next one is actually going to touch on knowledge. So with knowledge, I mean that you may already be very experienced with using Flutter, but may have no experience at all using frameworks such as React or Angular or Vue. And for that matter, you may have no experience with even HTML, CSS or JavaScript. So in this case, if it's between not being able to provide something for your user's request or being able to provide it, in the aspect of course that it's actually working correctly and it's good for the users, then Flutter is a go in this one, which means that Flutter will get the point here. But I want to reiterate that knowledge should not be a limiting factor here. If your users actually request you or that you want to provide a good web experience, then maybe learning that other framework or even basic HTML, CSS and JavaScript should be a good option for you. Now, looking at all of these different topics and my personal website, here are the points, meaning that Next.js won and the reasoning behind why I went with Next.js for my website. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to like and subscribe. If you want to see more content on things like React or Next.js, let me know down in the comments. And of course, if you would like to support me, you can find out Patreon also down in the description. And that's all for me for now. Check out these other videos coming up on the screen now. And I will see you in the next one.